Hello and welcome to Breaking Down, the series where we take an in-depth look at a Fire Emblem unit from a gameplay perspective. Before we start, I would like to thank the people who have backed the channel on Patreon, where for just £1 a month you can vote on the next unit to be released in this series. More on this at the end. Today we will be looking at Crest Scholar and Garrig Mark Professor, Hanneman. Whilst this series is not focused around plot, there is always a chance for spoilers and certain elements of the game and its structure and story will inevitably be mentioned, so if that is a concern for you, feel free to give it a miss. Also, where relevant, this is considering the maddening difficulty on a regular new game file with no exploits or excessive grinding. Hanneman is a member of the Church of Seros, which means regardless of the house you pick, he will not start in your roster. The earliest he is available is Chapter 8, and the only requirement for his recruitment is Byleth level. At most, Byleth has to be level 15, which should be the case around this time anyway, but if not, you can bump the requirement down with supports, where it reduces by 3 levels each time. There is no difference for these requirements based on house or route, they are the same across the board. On the whole, picking Hanuman up should be basically free. For a personal ability, Hanuman has Crest Scholar, which is basically just Rally Magic, which boosts an adjacent ally's magic by 4 until the next player phase. This isn't bad, but it's a little past the point where its usefulness can really be maximised, and with no other rallies in his kit, Hanuman can't combine this for anything else for a rally that provides many bonuses. It may provide some small benefits, but these will be pretty few and far between, and on the whole, at the point in time where you can recruit Hanuman, you will probably expect more from a turn than just boosting an ally's magic by 4. Hanuman comes with the minor crest of Indec, which offers a 10% chance to strike twice when using a weapon. As a primarily magically oriented character, this probably won't see a ton of use, especially with such a slim chance to activate making it not able to be relied upon. There may be some scenarios where this does see benefit, but by and large it won't be a huge game changer. The other benefit of this is that Hanuman can use relic weapons and equipment without taking damage, which may again provide some small use cases. As for Hanuman's skills, he has boons in bows, reason and riding, and banes in heavy armour and flying. It's a pretty quiet spread, but one that isn't too bad all around. Only having Banes in movement abilities is mostly fine here, especially since he has a boon in riding, which is pretty much the only one of those he would be likely to invest into to reach some potential class options later in the game. This means his Banes typically won't impact him too much, if at all. Being a magically oriented unit, a reason boon is always going to be appreciated greatly. His spell list is also going to factor heavily into this, so let's take a look at that now. Hanuman's reason spell list is odd. Whereas most characters offer some sort of clear direction, he kind of has a smattering of everything. Wind provides reliable chip due to its accuracy, and its weight is completely offset by Hanuman's base strength. Sargate is a little more powerful, but a little less accurate. Foreign is a really nice 1-3 to three range option, which is always going to prove useful at some point. Ragnarok ups the damage quite considerably with its 15 might, but comes with very limited uses, and Meteor has a huge 10 range and deals AoE damage, but its damage is on the lower end, and by default it only has one use per map. Over on the Faith side of things, the first thing to note here is that there is no boon in this field, so tapping into this half of his spell list will require more investment than is ideal. Outside of the default heal and Nosferatu, at the C rank he gets Recover, which is basically heal, but more. Not a bad thing to have, sometimes you just want a bigger heal, but not exactly anything outstanding. He only gets one other Faith spell here, and that is Ward at the B rank. This gives an adjacent ally 7 resistance, which decreases by 1 each turn. This is incredibly situational and not a massive contributor at all. In fact, when most people think of the primary use of Ward, they probably first think of the fact that it gives the user an easy way to grab some free experience each turn, rather than the actual buff it gives. This puts him in a really weird spot. He doesn't really excel at anything, but he can be of some use in most situations. His spells just don't really do enough to make them stand out, and he definitely lacks in both kill power and utility. His big claim is that he can chip in a variety of ways, with more accurate or higher range options, and Ragnarok for something a bit punchier, although on Maddening this can still lack the power to drop enemies in a single hit in a lot of scenarios. Hanuman also has another problem when it comes to being a mage, and that is his gender. Male mages really get shafted from a class perspective, missing out on Valkyrie, Darkflyer and Gremory as later options, all of which can be advantageous for many reasons. This will means he usually has to settle for a class option, which leaves him lacking in some way, although he does still have some viable choices available, such as Warlock or Dark Knight, if you want to make use of his spells, but we will get more into this later. The Bow Boon may not seem like anything important at first, but it actually can be very helpful. Firstly, since as mentioned Hanuman cannot access Valkyrie, he can't gain access to Uncanny Blow by mastering the class, which is a tool that female mages can make use of to bolster their accuracy. In lieu of this, Hanuman can opt to master Archer to acquire hit plus 20, and with his base C plus rank, he is able to guarantee a certification for this from the get-go. 
The other big help that this can provide is that he is just one rank away from being able to equip a magic bow. This can provide Hanuman with some alternate damage options past his spell list, especially because the boon and strong base rank can be used to push Hanuman on a path towards Sniper should you choose. We will go further into the pros and cons of this when we go through Hanuman's use cases, but it is a huge benefit to the boon itself, and the prowess in this area can see a lot of relevancy. Hanuman's bow boon does also give him access to a couple of limited combat arts, however, unfortunately, these are both pretty underwhelming. He joins with Schism Shot, which provides 4 damage, 15 hit, and has 2 to 3 range. It also provides a minus 5 resistance debuff to a target that is hit by this after combat. Ward Arrow, which becomes available at Abos, also strangely provides 4 damage and 15 hit, however this time it only has 2 range. When this hits a target, they are silenced for a turn, leaving them unable to use magic. The effects of both of these are extremely negligible, and although the boost to damage and hit is nice, as is the additional range from Sism Shot, they just aren't overly high impact. One last thing to mention in regards to Hanuman's skills is that despite not having a boon in the area, he does come with an authority that is raised off of the baseline, joining with a D rank. Whilst this may seem minor, it does allow him to use some of the magic boosting battalions that are present in the game, particularly the early game ones, which is definitely appreciated. You will still want to raise this higher, but not having to worry about doing so immediately is nice. In terms of his joining stats, 20 magic in the mage class at level 15 is honestly really solid. This is around where you would expect Lysithia or Constance to be at this point in time, and considering those are the biggest stat padders in this area, keeping up with them is not a bad sign at all. A 55% magic growth is also really solid here, allowing him to keep this stat in a very strong position throughout the game. As far as mages go, you can't really ask for much more than this in this area. He also has a pretty good resistance, allowing him to eat magical hits without any worries whatsoever, but unfortunately this just isn't a particularly relevant or high impact stat, and won't play too much of a role in his usefulness. His dexterity is serviceable, definitely not good, but enough for him to get by on without feeling too hindered by it at the very least. Charm is in a similar boat, you can scrape by with it, but you would definitely prefer this being a bit higher than it actually is. Nobody's perfect, and Hanuman's biggest weakness from his stats is his incredible fragility. First of all, he is dreadfully slow, only having 9 speed at level 15, which means that almost anything he enters combat with will have the capacity to double him outside of the super slow armoured enemies. On top of this, his 7 defence means that any of these hits will be ripping through his HP, and with just a 20% growth in speed and 25% in defence, both of these probably aren't improving to a point where they are remotely serviceable. That HP itself is also pretty mediocre, despite being notably better than the other two areas mentioned, especially since you won't have HP plus 5 unless you go out of your way to pick it up on him. From here, I think it's time to move on to using Hanuman throughout the course of the game. When you recruit him, the first thing you're going to want to look at is picking up some class masteries. His joining stats are good, and the tools he has access to at this point in time aren't too shabby, so none of this is too much of a priority. He joins in the Mage class, so this is a pretty good place to start. Mastering this will provide Hanuman with the ability Fiendish Blow, which increases his magic by 6 when he initiates combat. This is a very nice damage amplifier, and one he will want to pick up as soon as possible. Speaking of picking things up quickly, it is also worth pointing out that the chapter where Hanuman becomes available, Chapter 8, is the same point in time when you gain access to the Knowledge Gem, via the Sothis Paralogue, Tales of the Red Canyon. This doubles the amount of skill and class EXP gained from combat, meaning that mastering classes becomes twice as fast. Providing you also have access to the class mastery boost from the Saint statue, you will be gaining 4 class EXP per combat, meaning only 25 combats are required to master an intermediate class, including Mage, allowing Hanuman to quickly catch up on missing masteries. It's worth bearing in mind that I don't think you should be hard committing this item to Hanuman, it should be frequently traded around to allow you to make as much use of it as possible. With this in mind, it's also worth dipping back into Monk, in order to acquire the ability Magic Plus 2, which is granted from mastering the class, and in case it wasn't already obvious, grants 2 additional magic. Beginner class masteries only require 60 class EXP, so it can be achieved very quickly, especially with the use of the Knowledge Gem. Mastering Monk also grants the combat art Draw Back, a positional move which moves both the user and an adjacent ally back one tile. It's a handy thing to have access to, and due to Mage's typical lack of combat arts, it can be equipped for basically the entire game at no deficit. It was briefly mentioned earlier, but it can also be worth looking at the Archer class here, in order to acquire hit plus 20 through mastering it, which increases the hit of all attacks by 20. If you choose to do this, you have a couple of options to work around the fact that Archer cannot use spells. You can either bump bows up to a B rank, and make use of a magic bow to have Hanuman contribute to the action, or you can use him as an adjutant in the class. 
Whilst adjutanting him is certainly easier, it either means you have to spend longer to get the mastery, or you lock your knowledge gem to him and be unable to trade it around in the maps, since you cannot trade with adjutants, neither of which are particularly ideal, although personally I don't think you're missing out on too much by keeping him in Archer a little longer. On the other hand, since magic bows are quite costly to maintain, using them up to master Archer can be undesirable, especially since they can bring much more power and usage to the table later down the line. In general, whatever you choose to do with him here, Hanuman will be a bit mediocre at this point in time. He hits hard, but not hard enough to wipe out enemies in a single blow, and his speed prevents him from doubling. His utility is nothing to write home about either, so he basically just sets up kills or picks up kills which have been set up for him. It's nothing awful, he isn't useless, but you don't exactly slot him in and have him firing on all cylinders right off the bat. When looking at Hanuman's advanced pathing, you have a couple of options. You can either stick with a magical path to make use of his spell list, or you can commit to his bow usage and push towards Sniper. I'm going to start with the latter first, simply because it's much easier. Sniper has requirements of A bows, and once you class into this, the only thing you have to do is master the class. Doing so grants Hunter's Volley, a bow combat art which grants 1 might, 15 hit, 10 crit, has 2-3 to three range, and most importantly, always attacks twice in succession, allowing for absolutely massive damage. This also synergizes well with damage buffs, such as the class's innate bowfare, which increases the damage of bow attacks by 5, or the previously mentioned fiendish blow, since guaranteeing 2 hits means these are taken advantage of twice. Using a magic bow here allows for some incredible damage output, thanks firstly to Hanuman's very respectable stats in the area, but also because most enemies' resistance is lower than their defense, so hitting on this will usually give a sizable amount more kill potential. As for the downsides to this, well you do lose access to Hanuman's spell list, and whilst this isn't anything outstanding, it is still helpful, and having access to it is obviously better than not having access to it. There is also the awkward point after classing into Sniper but before mastering it, which is similar to the Archer stage, however in this case Sniper requires 150 class EXP rather than 100. Once again you can prowl through it with a bow in combat, or make use of adjutanting to master this. Another issue is that magic bows can be quite costly to acquire and maintain, they require arcane crystals to craft, repair, and forge, and the base variant only has 25 uses, with the Magic Bow Plus having 30. Hunter's Volley costs 5 durability per use, so you're going to be chewing through these quite quickly. You can get arcane crystals randomly around the monastery, from feeding cats and dogs if you have the DLC, or as a random reward from Orcs Battles that grant ore. In Part 2, you can also gain access to the Dark Merchant, who will sell Arcane Crystals in Exploration Days. This basically alleviates the problem entirely, but he is not available until Chapter 16, so you will have to wait for this to be able to make use of him. Until he shows up, Arcane Crystals can be reasonably uncommon, although if you do have the DLC and partake in Fistfuls of Fish events, you can usually just serve the various animals around the monastery an absolute banquet until you have enough for your needs. Crafting the magic bows also requires a B-plus professor level and can be done from a steel bow. The sniper build does allow for massive damage output and without too much effort too. The only problem is that that is basically all it does. Click Hunter's Volley with a magic bow and one enemy each turn dies. You can't take Hunter's Volley out of sniper so there's no way to be able to make use of this and his spell list simultaneously. Don't get me wrong, being able to nuke an enemy each turn is valuable, especially from 3 to 4 range once you factor in the class's innate bow range plus 1, but it's not really anything special. So what about a magical path? Well, at an advanced stage he misses out on two of the most desirable options for mages, Valkyrie and Darkflyer, on account of being male. This leaves him with Warlock as the best option for him at this point. The class requires a reason to guarantee certification, and whilst you can gamble it lower, you're going to want access to Meteor anyway, so you may as well go all the way up to that A rank as soon as possible. Warlock is by no means a bad class, it comes with Black Tome Fair, boosting the damage of his Black Magic attacks by 5, and also Black Magic uses times 2, allowing for double the cast of these spells. The latter of these is particularly noticeable on Meteor, allowing for two uses of it rather than one. Alongside this, the class also has a very appreciated plus 3 magic modifier, when you factor this in with Black Tome Fair, the class essentially gives 8 additional damage on each attack, which definitely isn't something to be ignored. The big issue with Warlock is its extremely limited movement, having just a lowly 4 move, the same as Commoner and Noble. This can make manoeuvring around the map extremely tedious, and can lead to the action already being over before Hanuman is able to reach it. To compensate for this, you may wish to give him equipment like a March Ring or the Fetters of Dromi, to enhance his move whilst it is equipped a consumable item like the Shoes of the Wind, to boost it permanently, or a range boosting item such as the Thiasus or Caduceus staffs. It's worth noting that you can use a March Ring to go up to 5 move, and then swap this over to one of the staffs for increased range after moving all in the same turn. Whilst his damage is excellent here, he can also still struggle to kill things. 
Raising his authority to make use of the higher ranked magic battalions can help this quite a bit, since some of them give massive magic modifiers which can help find some additional one shots. There is also once again equipment that can help with this, such as a magic staff. All in all though you might just have to settle for some large chunks in some scenarios, and of course you can make use of Meteor for long range AoE damage and pulling groups of enemies for better tactical advantages. Now, if you did want to leave Hanuman in Warlock, that is fine and you can absolutely make it work, however, there is one more step he can take at level 30, and that is to class into Dark Knight. This has requirements of A Riding, B Plus Reason, and C Lancers. The boon in Riding can help him reach the high requirement here, and Lancers don't need to be raised too much. This can also be gambled with lower requirements too, to save on investment further. There are ups and downs to this. Dark Knight does not bring black magic uses times 2 to the class, so you can't take advantage of the benefits that can bring. The damage is also one point lower, since whilst the class does have black tone fare, it only has a two point magic modifier. In exchange for this, what you do get is a significant increase to mobility, with the class bringing 7 move and canto to the table, allowing Hanuman to reach his opponents much more easily and retreat out afterwards. One other thing to note is that if you dismount on Dark Knight, it does not have the mage's movement benefits that Warlock does, which makes it easier for the latter to move over certain terrain, such as deserts or fiery floor. It's worth remembering that you can also switch back between the two classes depending on the map or what your team needs in a specific scenario, so if you do decide Warlock would be better in some situations, you can always go back to it whenever you please, meaning you can have the best of both worlds. I think Dark Knight is definitely worth picking up if you do go down a magical path for Hanuman, the extra mobility just makes it so much easier for him to contribute in a lot of situations. As for whether I prefer the Sniper or Mage builds, I have to lean towards the Sniper path. Whilst it does have some awkward periods, overall it just gives him much better kill power for most of the game, and whilst maintaining magic bows can be quite costly, he could be the one to make it worth it, since his magic stat is very solid. That about wraps up Hanuman. Whilst he can struggle to stand out, who said he can't still contribute? He has a couple of builds which can let him either be a viable player phase kill threat, or chunk down enemies with his spell list. I hope this helps you to get the most out of him. I would once again like to thank the people who have backed the channel on Patreon, the support is greatly appreciated. When this goes live, the poll up there for the next unit to be released will have 24 hours remaining on it, so if you want to get involved and have your say, you can do so for just £1 a month. A link is in the description. If you want to discuss this video, the channel, or Fire Emblem in general, consider joining the Discord. Thank you very much for watching.